Sometimes you hear the, the phrase, um, you know, two steps forward, one step back. And sometimes the spiritual journey seems like that, two steps forward, one step back, because if it truly is when you really have that purpose and inspiration and you really do tune in and go for it with your two steps forward, we kind of call it ego backlash or sometimes ego whiplash. <laughs> the ego goes from suspicious to vicious the more loving you are. So when you really tune in and make bold steps and strides in the direction of your purpose, the ego will recoil that part of your mind that's afraid of being undone and it's a major backlash or whiplash. And so, you know, in one sense, uh, it's, uh, that's not necessarily how it has to go, but in, in many or most cases, that's the way that it seems to go. And so once you start to experience that, which I had that experience a lot in my journey, which was quite a long journey, um, you just, every time you get that one step back, you learn to kind of just watch it and observe it and not react or conclude something because of the one step back. Uh, you just get better and better and better at that. Uh, I remember years ago, before the Course came into my life, I remember I would do this with the universe where I would just like go through my thoughts and my frustrations and I would just pray and then I would turn on the radio and I would just get the messages from the song on the radio. So it was just as good as like the Course as an oracle. And I remember one time I just was so discouraged about my latest uh, ego backlash, whiplash, viciousness and I'm never going to get this and it's throwing me back, you know, and this and this and this. And I remember um, this was back probably, I don't know, around, I don't know, around 1980s. Billy Joel, The Stranger album, the words from the song The Stranger, don't be afraid to try again. Everyone goes sour every now and then. You know, this is the kind of stuff I would get from the Holy Spirit back in those days before, you know, I was really into the Course. But I would flip it on and I'd be like, ugh. Thank you, you know, but to just heaven, don't be afraid to try again. Everyone goes sour every now and then. Hoo hoo, you've done it. Why can't someone else? You should know by now. You've been there yourself. I'm like, okay, all right, got it. You know. But it was a pep talk. So for me, it was, a, it was like a burst of a little pickup. And, and I think you know, that's what we have to do, is we have to open ourselves to those reflections and witnesses. Because for most, it's there, you have to deal with this kind of backlash thing that happens in the mind. And the ego wants you to make some kind of conclusion. Like, look at you, look at you, you're not going anywhere, you know, you're treading water, you're, you know, and, and, and the one step back, it, it will emphasize that, you know, as if your two steps forward never happened. You know, when you're in the one step back, it just feels like it's a thousand steps back. You might as well just be drowning and sub submerged under the water because that's how it feels. So it just totally blocks the awareness of the miracles. Even if you go through this and you have lots of miracles, it will just block out those lots of miracles and just make it really dark and, and grim and pessimistic and it's just the ego has a one-track mind, like a broken record of just, you know, always trying to sabotage any sense of hope, any sense of progress, just always coming in there really, really hard. So that's one of the things that, that hopefully as you get deeper into your spiritual practice, you just, it's more of that lightheartedness, that laughter we were talking about where you can just start to watch it and not draw conclusions from it. Like, oh, here we go, okay, all right. Thank you for sharing, thank you for sharing, thank you for sharing, and then, you know, and then we're gonna move on now. We're not, going to, we're not going to harbor these things. We're not gonna just go through and grind them through the grinder and grind them and re-grind them. You know, it's, you just have to let them come. And, and it really helps also, of course, with your relationships because, you know, that's, 
that's the reflection of your mind too. That's really why you have these teaching learning partners, these mirrors, these reflectors, is not to harbor and hold on the, the grievances and, the, and the, the snubs we were calling them earlier or the, the mistreatments and everything. You know, it's not at all what Jesus and the Holy Spirit are encouraging uh, us to do. I remember there's a part that's just so poetic in the, in the text of the Course where Jesus says, dream softly of your sinless brother. Think Think of his kindnesses that he offered you, you know, instead of the pain. He's like, please, he's pleading. Dream, it's such a so dream softly of your sinless brother. You know, what an answer to that son of a guy. If I ever get my hands on, and, he, and here comes, dream softly of your sinless brother. You know, it's just like, he's not even close to that just grinding when I just want to rip somebody up and tear somebody up and just grind it through the grinder you know it's like no no softly I said softly you know it you can just see how light that is and there's no way you can hardly even read that sentence with harshness you know dream softly with your sinless brothers if you put the tone you know to the words you know it's it's gentle it's encouraging, it's lifting you, it's just saying, no, no, come up here, don't, don't go down there, just stay up here with me. So that's what we, we practice and we need those reminders and we need to remind ourselves and we need to be reminded and we need to remind others. It's all part of this building that momentum up, you know, to remember his kindnesses, you know, instead of the pains, you know, instead of the hurts. It's like memory is selective just like perception is selective and we actually have a choice of which memories we're going to remember we're going to remember the memories of love or the memories of of hurt pain grievances the choice is there it's just that with this linear trick of time and this causation thing it's like the ego just points out its targets you know points out its enemies and you know, it's just, it just keeps replaying those characters over and over. Even so, sometimes the faces change, sometimes the circumstances change. You know, if you really step back, you can start to, to see this a looping pattern, like a Groundhog Day, of the, the same kind of thought patterns just play out over and over and over. Just with little slight variations of characters' names and changes, you know, to make it look just like it's happening fresh and new when it's the same old past just coming along coming around again like that song if you're willing to play the game it'll be coming around again coming around again so we're just getting wise to these tricks and to this sense that just beginning to open up ever so slightly to this awareness that actually oh my god what you're telling me is that I have never been mistreated never not <coughs> once that every single time in this lifetime or past life re regressions or whatever till the beginning of time every single time I perceived myself unfairly treated snubbed you know backstabbed you know whatever that every single time that was just a misperception it was still trying to cling to this grim death, it's like a funeral dirge, just a, a, a death wish, a, a funeral dirge, just trying to desperately cling to it and make it true. And we're told over and over and over, you know, your past is gone. It can touch you not. You know, it, you don't try to bring it with you anymore. It's a time thing that you're stuck in. You're stuck in a loop. You keep going back to this vault and bringing out all these wicked memories and pulling them over your clean, fresh, present moment that you have here just to experience and, and bask in. You could just bask in it forever if you wanted. It would just, it would just take you away into eternity, but, but you keep dragging, 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 dragging these past memories as if they're still real and true. So we're just really getting practice when 
people come, when we're tempted to react, when we're tempted to, you know, have a defense come up or become defensive in any way, it's just past thoughts in our mind that are just spinning around there again, you know, trying to get our attention. So, you know, the, that's the incentive is to just, for us to really, really firmly join together in this and say, you know, we're, we are not going to allow ourselves to get tricked by this yet again, another facet of the diamond spinning around. It's the same thing. It's, we have to become, to start to see it's the same trick. And we don't really have to keep falling for it. We're safe. We're actually very, very safe without having to fall for these defenses and get back into these spinning gyrations and everything, these dramas. Uh, you know, it's, I always think of that, that they talked about the, the Chinese curse. Uh, may you live in exciting times. Uh, and I always used to look at that as like, that's a, that's a curse? You know, it's such a positive word, exciting, you know, exciting, exciting. But that's the Chinese curse. <laughs> may you live in exciting times. It's more, don't, don't get lured into the drama. Don't get lured into a false sense of, of a sensationalism uh, excitement that, that are really just another distraction. You know, it, I, I love that part in the course workbook where, you know, it says some, some try to put by the sadness they feel with games that they play. And when Jesus says that in the course, and I was like, I said to him one time, I said, what games? What games are you talking about? He said, do you really want me to tell you? <laughs> I said, yes. And so he just, well, he just went on and on and on with the games and the distractor devices like, like he could just go on for hours. And, and then there's this, and then there's this. And said, well, yeah, but, what that's, but that's life. And then there's this, and then there's this. It's like all these tens and hundreds and thousands of games that are just generated as a ways to put by the sadness, to keep push, really keep the sadness pushed out of awareness. When, you know, even if you look back in philosophy, you know, you can look back at all, all the different philosophers like Sartre, you know, and the existentialists. You know, I remember when I was in philosophy reading about the existentialists and they were like, you know, life sucks. You know, they, <laughs> in their own, each in their own way, they just said, it's, yeah, Nietzsche, I mean, just, they, you went on with all these existential, it was like, it's, it's just grim, it's dark, it's bad, it's everything, this and this, and, and it's interesting that, that they would have a whole branch of philo philosophers that would basically, uh, if you take all the whipped cream and the icing and, and all the ice cream and everything else off the glitz and ooh la la, you just, you just skim off the whole top thing, then you've got this black band of death, <laughs> just a death wish in every angle you look at. And it's like, oh, no wonder they've made up so much whipped cream and banana splits and all kinds of things.